Hey everybody, it's Gomadex, and welcome back to some more Jumpstart. For this event, I chose Spirits and Rogues as my two themes. I just figured they'd probably be pretty good together. My first pick was Spirits, and then the second was like Tree Hugging, or Doctor, or Rogues. And I felt like Tree Hugging and Doctor would be a lot more slow strategies, whereas Spirits and Rogues both sound like uh, strategies that will probably have a lot of early game creatures. I could try to play a really quick aggressive deck with a lot of evasive threats and when I looked at the deck that's exactly what I got. It's a pretty cool deck and I got really lucky this time because both of my decks, both of the 20 card halves of the deck I should say, uh, got two rares. So both the packs, Gonti Lord of Luxury, a great reprint in Jumpstart. This came from Aether Revolt originally, I believe, or Kaladesh, one of the two in that block. It's a 4-mana 2-3 legendary Aetherborn rogue with death touch, and basically it lets you get one of your opponent's cards from the top four cards of their library and cast it as your own. You get to spend your mana as though it were any color, and you can cast that card whenever you want for the rest of the game. So it's pretty cool. You use your opponent's own best card against them, at least the best card in the top four. And then Thieves Guild Enforcer, just a little rogue tribal rare from M21. This lets you mill your opponent two cards every time a rogue enters the battlefield under your control, and obviously half of this deck is rogues. Another thing that came in the rogues half of this deck that actually will work really well with the spirits half is rogues gloves. Two mana for an equipment, for two mana you equip it, and whenever equipped creature deals combat damage to a player, you may draw a card. So that works really well with a lot of evasive creatures. Rogues do have a few. They've got like Death Touch. Uh, this one's got Flying. And there's a couple Flyers here at the bottom. But the Spirits half of our deck has a lot of really good unblockable stuff too. We've got Rattle Chains, Flash Flying. This is a new rare to jumpstart. Uh, when it enters the battlefield, target spirit gains Hexproof until end of turn, and you can cast all your spirits as though they had Flash. Shacklegeist is our, our rare from Corset. Uh, it's a 2-mana two 2-2 two, two flyer. can only block creatures with Flying, but you can tap two untapped spirits you control to tap any creature you don't control. And then... Obviously, most of our spirits have flying. Nebelgast Herald has flying and taps something whenever a spirit comes into play. Roman Ghostlight has flying. Battleground Geist has flying. We have all kinds of evasive stuff in blue. Even Tome Anima can't be blocked at all if we've drawn two cards this turn. And Departed Deckhand can't be blocked except by spirits. So tons of stuff that combos with the Rogue's Glove, which is really cool. And both of the halves work together pretty well. It's kind of just a blue-black evasion sort of strategy. So, with the deck overview out of the way, let's get into the games. And we'll see what our two rare rewards are. But opening two rares in each of our packs is a pretty nice way to start this event either way. So we can't really go wrong from this point. Especially since... This is a casual event. It's got the casual event structure of you just pay, you get your cards, and you play as much as you want. Doesn't matter how many times you lose. You could take 50 games to get to your two wins if you want. You will not get kicked out of the event. All right. This seems like a really nice curve. We have Departed Deckhand on turn two, Nebelgast Herald on turn three, and Gonti Lord of Luxury on turn four. A lot of really cool stuff. We also have an Alchemist's Gift as a little pump spell for when our things get into combat. If they get blocked by something, maybe we can beat their creature by getting Death Touch or just by the plus one plus one. Of course, we need to make sure not to cast this on our Departed Deck Hand because if we do... Departed Deckhand will have to be sacrificed, because that is its first ability. Whenever it becomes the target of a spell, you just have to sacrifice it. So I'm waiting till their turn to cast Nebelgast Herald, because it does have Flash, that means I can cast it at any time, and when it enters the battlefield, I can tap one of their creatures, so I can get them to not attack with Brush Strider that turn, even though it has Vigilance. 
All right, so now they have a Garux Harbinger. This has Hexproof from Black, so not protection from Black, so I can block it and kill it with Gaunti. Uh, but also, whenever it deals combat damage to a player or Planeswalker, they look at that many cards from the top of their library, put a creature or Garuk card from them into their hand and the rest on bottom. And they do have the Garuk lands. The Garuk and plus one looks like the decks that they chose. So they are on mono green with Garuk. So I don't know if I want to play Gonti right now. I know they can't block any of my creatures, so I can send in for four, but I really want to have something to block Harbinger. And I'm debating whether or not I want to like just sacrifice one of these with an alchemist's gift or just let Gonti die. I guess since Gonti lets me cast a card, even if Gonti's dead, uh, we'll cast a Gonti first. And try to just block. I'm actually going to take the Hunter's Edge. The reason I'm taking Hunter's Edge is because with Death Touch, I can use this to kill anything. So if Gonti's still on the board when I do this, I can uh, put a counter on Gonti and kill whatever I want. Or... I can use Alchemist's Gift to give any of my creatures plus one, plus one, and Death Touch till end of turn, and Hunter's Edge to uh, to finish something off. I am going to go ahead and just trade with the Garuk's Harbinger. It does have Trample, so they do get to look at the top one card of their library and see if it's a creature or Garuk. Looks like it is not. And now I'm just going to cast their Hunter's Edge against them to do three damage to their three one and send in for five. Tons of Garuk lands over there. And a Wildwood Scourge. It's a 4-4. Ooh, Rogue's Gloves is a pretty nice draw. They're down to 9 already, so they're 2 swings from death. Can't block any of my stuff. And they're just going to scoop them up once I attach that Rogue's Gloves to the Departed Deck Hand. Because Rogue's Gloves, I get to draw a card whenever it does combat damage to a player. Departed Deck Hand can just not be blocked by anything in their whole deck. So even if they found a removal spell for one of the cards, I'm now drawing a card every single turn alongside doing two damage to them. Or three if they killed the Deck Hand first. So that was a pretty brutal game in our favor. We'll see what our first Jumpstart Rare is. It's a really nice one. This card is great in Commander. I played in a lot of my Commander decks uh, that are in black. It is Harvester of Souls, a 6-mana 5-5 uh, five, five demon. Whenever another non-token creature dies, you get to draw a card, and it has Death Touch. So this is really good in Commander. Probably not that great on Arena, uh, at least until... If they add multiplayer, if they add four player like Commander, like I really, really, really hope they do at some point. Um, for now, Harvester of Souls doesn't really have a place on Arena, but man, this card is sick in a four player game of Commander because creatures are dying all the time. Everybody's attacking each other. Some people are playing like sacrifice token decks and they have a bunch of creatures dying. This card can draw so many cards. Um, yeah, so a fantastic reprint from all the way back in Avis and Restored, I believe, was the first release of Harvester of Souls. It's a really nice reward. So, anyways, let's hop into the next game. Maybe we'll get a nice little 2-0 run with Spirits and Rogues. It seems like a pretty strong deck. I'm going to add this to my decks. It might be one of my favorites that I've done so far. Ooh, this hand has a curve. I mean, not really a curve, it's just a bunch of really cheap cards. Two one-drops and a two-drop. And then it's got a Frost Breath to tap things, even if they have things that might be able to block my flyers. I'm going to keep this, and just the fact that I get to play Thieves Guild Enforcer as my first card of the whole game, so every single rogue I play for the rest of the game mills them to, is, uh, is pretty neat, because then I can have that secondary win condition of if I can't kill them fast enough, maybe I can just try to slow them down with stuff like uh, Capture Sphere and Frost Breath. Uh, to just mill them out over the course of a long game. So we mill them two cards. See if they have eight or more cards in their graveyard. This is a 3-2 death touch, so I think it's nice and large. 
going to drop the shackle guys now. It is just a 1-1 one, one right now. I'll just pass the turn. So far we know that they have the plus one theme. And that was not really a game, so I'll go ahead and jump into another round. I want to have two full games in each of these videos at least. I want to earn these wins, but let's see what the second rare reward is. Looks like it's not a mythic. Just a couple rares. We just got six rares in this event. I mean, that's that's a shame. Looks like it's Kira Great Glass Spinner. This card is really strong. Um, I wouldn't be surprised if this saw a little bit of historic play, but that's not really in my wheelhouse. I play a lot of Historic Brawl, but I don't play competitive, just ranked Historic. Um, but this will be great in Historic Brawl, at least. Three mana for a 2-2 two -two flyer. Creatures you control have whenever this creature becomes the target of a spell or ability for the first time each turn, counter that spell or ability. So it gives all of your cards just really good protection. They have to be targeted twice for stuff to resolve so if your opponent just has like spell based removal like cards like doom blade grasp of darkness all that kind of stuff the fact that they have to waste one they have to use two to kill your thing is really really good so yeah kira another really good reprint this one back from like champions of kamigawa really going back for that and I did not mention, but that card is also legendary, so if you really wanted to, you could use that as your commander. Um, it's not that interesting of a commander, in my opinion, but I do think it's a really good card overall, just to help all your other creatures. Make your board really hard to deal with. So I'm going to keep this hand. This one's a little awkward. Doesn't really have a great curve. But I do have multiple playable decent creatures, and they're relatively early in the game. Our opponent has the minions deck, and a green deck of some kind. They start off with a drain pipe vermin. When it dies, they can pay a black and have somebody discard a card. That will probably be me. If I had to guess... Will probably make me discard a card and not discard one themselves. Alright, and the green deck is dinosaurs, so dinosaur minions over here. The minions deck has a lot of uh, sacrifice outlets and stuff, like Witch's Cauldron, and effects that happen when they die with expendable creatures like Drain Pipe Vermin. They could have the mono black, well, they could have the black. A legendary creature from Jumpstart, the new one, that whenever they sacrifice something, they can pay an additional blue or black, and if they do, they get to draw a card. So that's a pretty cool new card. Again, another one of the, the neat little commanders in the set. Let me see if I can... Ah, uh, here it is. Kells, the Fight Fixer, is what they could have as yes, their rare. 4-3 Legendary Menace. Whenever they sack a creature, they can pay one mana. If they do, they draw a card. And for one mana, they can sacrifice a creature and have it gain indestructible till end of turn. So that's the kind of, like, rares that would be in that deck. Just really big cards that have good sacrifice effects, as well as giving you benefits when you are sacrificing things. And then, obviously, the dinosaur half of their deck is, uh... Is dinosaurs. It's pretty self-explanatory. Some of the themes are super self-explanatory, and some of them you can go into a bit of detail, like minions. Like, what what does minions mean? You just hear the word minions, and you're like, eh, I don't know. Could be, could sort of be anything. I'm gonna drop this Nebelgast Herald so I can just send in for three. Now, every other spirit I play for the rest of the game gets to tap something, so I can try to turn this into just a back-and-forth aggro game. No more cards from that turn. Unfortunately, I don't have any more spirits, so... <laughs> so much for the whole back-and-forth kind of thing. I also don't have the second Swamp to cast Gaunti. If I did, I think Gaunti would definitely be the play, because he's very cool and very powerful. 
As it stands, I suppose I could drop down a nocturnal feeder. I don't really want to hold up Rewind. They do have dinosaurs, so they probably have six mana stuff that's worth countering, but I have Finishing Blow anyway to kill one of them. And then, um, let's see, three damage. They'd kill both of these on blocks. So yeah, I'll send it with everybody. Anyways, I can Finishing Blow one of their dinos. And if I don't have to do that, Next turn, if I draw another land, I can actually hold up a Rewind and Finishing Blow in the same turn, which is extra cool. Because I get to counter something and then untap four lands, untapping the four lands that I used for Rewind and then Finishing Blow after that. It's just cool when you get to do other stuff than Rewind um, in the same turn. So it looks like they're not going to attack this turn. They did Crushing Canopy, my flyer. That's what happened earlier. They just destroy a creature with flying. Um, I think I'll send in with the Nocturnal Feeder. Obviously not going to send in with the 3-2. But I could if I really wanted to use this pump spell immediately, but I don't... I don't really. I'm going to drop down a Tome Anima. Just keep putting stuff on this board. Spreading out my threats. There's a Colossal Dread Mob. We will probably finishing blow that. We're still one mana off from it, though, so maybe Alchemist's Gift instead to get plus one, plus one, and Death Touch. If I want to hold up Alchemist's Gift, though, I can't play anything else that's black because I've only drawn one Swamp this game, which is pretty awkward. I guess I'll just send in for two in the sky. They're down to ten life now, so I think we're still in a good spot, even if I'm going to be taking some trample damage this turn. I can also block with the Lawless Broker and give the Lawless Broker Death Touch. Trade that way. This is getting rewinded. <laughs> that is 100% getting rewinded. That's Galta. Good old 12-12 trample. Don't really want to deal with that. Well, we got to live the dream, which is to cast rewind and another spell in the same turn, thanks to the fact that you untapped your lands. So yeah, now we'll give the 3-2 Death Touch, because when this one dies, I get to put a plus and plus one counter on another one of my creatures. So I toss a counter onto my 2-1 flyer, it turns into a 3-2 flyer, and I start just making the clock even faster, hitting them for 3 a turn. So it looks like our opponent just scooped them up right there. They did not like Rewind into Alchemist's Gift for the double tricks to kill off their dinos. Well, I will certainly take that. This is not going to be a jumpstart reward, unfortunately, because that was my third win, technically. This is just one of my random rewards for the day, so probably just some kind of uncommon I already have a playset of, but let's hype it up anyway. What did we get? All right, well, you know, Glass Casket, I guess. They, they can't all be winners. Well, that was my third a jumpstart event video with spirits and rogues this time really nice deck definitely adding that to my decks um that was fun i recommend both of these themes uh just if you like spirits or if you like rogues these are both well built pretty powerful decks so like to thank you all for watching. If you want to see some more Magic Arena videos, just stick around and I'll be back again very soon with another Jumpstart video. Um, I believe on Friday, or I don't remember when I'm going to be uploading this video. On some Friday, it might be this Friday, it might be next Friday, depending on when you're seeing this. Um, <laughs> they will be showing off the very, very first previews about Zendikar Rising. Uh, so that'll be on Friday... Friday, July 24th. So I will definitely be doing a reaction video of that or just talking about the cards that they spoiled. So you can look forward to that. Uh, that would be the next new thing after the jumpstart videos that I'm planning on. And then on Friday, July 31st, Dominaria Premier Drafts will be back on Arena. So I'll do a few of those videos. And then obviously a long time out now, but something that I'm still pretty excited about, uh, on August 13th, that is when Amonkhet Remastered shows up, and I'll be doing some Amonkhet Remastered drafts. In the meantime, stick around, be some more Jumpstart, maybe a couple core set drafts, just some nice summertime magic until the next launches. So, 
once again, thank you all for watching. I hope you enjoyed it as much as I did playing it, and I will see you again very soon for some more Magic Arena.